we're trying to fly. We all had flying dreams when we were kids. And the wingsuit is the closest thing to non-powered human flight you can get. I know that a lot of people think that I'm crazy. I admit that this sport is dangerous. Of course it is. If you make a mistake, it can be your death. I think he came in within a meter of the ground. It looked like his shadow just went up to spank him and just missed him. You go like a rocket. That's, that's the coolest thing with wingsuit flying. It's the most maneuverable flying machine I've used. And I've been flying airplanes and things like that, but this is totally different. And you fly with your whole body. You can fly down and buzz the mountainside for, for 20 seconds, five feet off the ground. Is this safe? Is, are we gonna be, are we gonna dive proximity flying these cliffs? And McConkie, he's fired up. I'm gonna be five feet off the wall, man, yeah! And I'm like, dude, settle down, man. You don't even know what you're getting into. Imagine it was your job to get sent to the most remote corners of the world to do what you love most. These are athletes, but this is no game. They've been training all their lives, but there is no trophy to win. The friends watching their backs are more than a team, they're a lifeline. They are living a dream that could end as fast as the weather changes, equipment breaks, or they misjudge a landing. This is their job. They are sponsored professional athletes who get sent to the most exotic spots on the planet to push the limits of their sport. to capture one moment, 15 seconds of film, a half-page glossy photo, and there is no place they would rather be. When the drop count ends, it's just you, your fear, and the film crew. The world is rushing around you, but for that moment in time, you and the camera have to be focused. Stock car racing. 18 cars jammed on a half mile over. Over 120 miles per hour, inches apart. And me, just seven days after getting behind the wheel for the first time, about to get the green flag. Here we go. Time to find out if I'm ready to race with the big boys. All right, we're going green. Go, go, go. When you grow up in Louisiana, dreaming of climbing a mountain is like dreaming of going to the moon. I had fun as a kid, playing baseball, vacationing with the family, and riding my bike. But I craved something more. I just didn't know what. I finally got a taste of adventure at 18 when I scaled Africa's tallest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro. This was what I'd been looking for. As a mountaineer, I've conquered the seven summits, including Mount Everest, a few times. But now I'm looking for new ways to activate. So join me as I travel the globe, attempting the wildest and most intense challenges imaginable, all in the name of adventure. I am Joby O'Gwen. I am the adventurous. I was feeling pretty good about driving all by myself on the track with plenty of room around me. But today, we'll throw in a little twist. A second car driven by Dan. The two of us side by side at over 100 miles an hour fighting for position. I'll lead probably for the first few laps. Okay. And I'll probably have you on that outside because that's a tough side to be. Right. You know, just work on that outside. Hug that door, like I said. I mean, work, work, work the inside of that door. That's close, where you need not to too be. Close. Right. You need to be about about like we are right here. Okay. You know? Just enough room. Again, use your peripheral vision. It's a good opportunity right now to see what type of peripheral vision you're gonna have because of the headrest right. helmet. I mean, so now you need to know whereabouts you can see. Okay. Because okay, now's the time to do it rather than wait till race night. Right. And have a problem. Okay.
giving you room. I'm giving you room. That a boy. There you go. Stay with me. That's okay. Stay with me. Stay with me. Get down on my door, Joby. Touch me, but get right up over there. Get right over there. Good job. Good job. Go, 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 go. Go, Joby, go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go! need to bring it in. You broke the right front fender. Let me make sure it ain't rubbing. All right, bring it in. Next time, by. Shut her down to the back stretch. <sighs> I'm just kind of trying to catch my breath here a little bit. It's a lot more intense and we weren't even going full speed. Just the idea of making contact and having him moving around me like that, being behind me. If you ever drive down the road and have somebody tailgate you. They're not as close and actually bumping you like Dan was to me. And uh, we're getting there. I, I feel good about what we've been doing right, right now, but uh, it's gonna be a whole lot different to have 15, 16 guys around me doing the same thing he's doing, all out to get me. I think there's only a couple people in the world that are actually doing it on a regular basis. It's definitely rare. It was a really cool moment because that's something that I don't think has ever been done before. That's what you do when you're a pioneer and, and you create things. You have eventually have learning lessons that aren't always good. That's sick! That's so amazing! Yeah! So the top of the, uh, the mountain that we want to speed fly off of is covered in clouds 95% of the time. We get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, we check the weather conditions, it's cloudy and windy. We started to get desperate, you know, we, we started to, you know, we were leaving soon, we wanted to fly it so badly. We came to the last day and we just decided that we'd just hike up there and just see exactly what was going on. We have to go up there and see what it's like, you know, find a launch that we can fly if the conditions do happen to get good but there were clouds obscuring the top front of the mountain because all the heat coming up the face, the moist sea air would condense when it reached the cooler atmosphere, 3,000 feet above sea level where we were at. We worked our way along the ridge to the spot that we thought was correct to the best of our knowledge. So the launch itself was clear, but just 10 or 15 feet past the cliff, it was totally thick clouds. And when you're flying in a cloud and you can't see 20 or 30 feet in front of you, you can't see 20 or 30 feet beneath you or behind you or in any direction. It's totally disorienting. It's vertigo, pure vertigo. You definitely don't know what direction you're going in. And you can have a really slight turn in your glider. And that turn, if it continues while you're in the cloud, you come back flying directly at the cliff face, flying as fast as a speed flying wing flies, which is a lot faster than you want to slam into a rock wall. So we were super apprehensive about launching into the cloud. Um, we each had compasses, but the compasses on El Hierro were just crazy. Um, it's, they weren't spinning in circles or anything, but they would definitely stick. Um, it was getting late in the day. We had about an hour of sunlight left, and then the sun poked through. Um, we couldn't see more than 20 feet, but we saw the outline of the sun, and the sun was low enough in the horizon because it was just before sunset that I knew if we flew towards the sun, we would end up away from the cliff, and as long as we didn't lose that reference of which direction the sun was coming from, we'd be okay. All right, they're gonna go here in uh, five seconds. Sun. Pretty nerve-wracking being in the cloud with a speed flying wing at an unknown site with no visibility. 
the sun was there and it kind of wasn't there and it'd come back again. So we did manage to use it as a reference for the first few seconds. As soon as we popped out, I looked down and saw that we were right over where we wanted to be. It was just a total miracle because we, we had no idea where we were. The huge cool R was just to our left. We made a few turns, dropped into the top of it, and had an amazing flight. We had about 3,000 feet to play with. Um, we had this super steep cool to dip in and out of. So we were flying in and out of the sun, following each other, kind of dog fighting. It was really nice to watch it. They was follow the contour of the mountain and make like a overloop and attack again the mountain and make one win over and attack. And it was so beautiful to watch it. What I can say about that is I want to do it. They had a lot of speed and they were like carving the whole mountain down. It was beautiful. Like it was so amazing. Yeah, just carving there, you know, with a lot of harmony there, just connecting and just hitting the borders of the face. It's just so exciting. The closer you are to terrain, the more you feel your speed and the faster it seems that you're going. When you're speed flying and you know, you're zooming really close over treetops, over rocks or grass or whatever it is that you're flying over, it's, it's just it's fantastic. I mean, your, your vision becomes a little bit narrower because you're going so fast. It's consistently exciting for two to three minutes.